מיד שיחה מיוחדת עם ג'ון אג'ריאן, ה-co-founder של Market Rebellion, אחד הפרויקטים הכי מדהימים שקיימים לטריידרים, למשקיעים וכולי, הם המציאו את ה-unusual activity. נדבר איתו על השוק, נדבר איתו על קריפטו, נדבר על ה-unusual activity. ודרך אגב, הוספתי תרגום לוידאו הזה. כשאתם הולכים למסך, אתם תראו, כתוב CC בריבוע, לוחצים על ה-CC, זה מוסיף לכם את התרגום, כך שאתם יכולים לעקוב אחרי זה. מציע במסך גדול, לשבת אחורה. ולשמוע איך הכסף הגדול, איך האנשים שמשקיעים, איך האנשים שמבינים 30-40 שנה בשוק, על מה קורה. מוכנים לזה? קדימה. מתחילים. היי, אבריוואן. מייקה סטוקס פה עוד פעם, ואנחנו נהיה ספיישל גסט בשביל שלנו. John Najarian from Market Rebellion. I'm going to add him to the show right now, and we're going to start a very, very amazing conversation. Hey, John, how are you? Micah, I am fantastic, sir. Uh, Excellent. I'm doing really well. I was flattered that you reached out to me, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. So I can tell you a small secret. My viewers, mainly from Israel, but from around the globe that speak Hebrew, actually saw your face several times. They saw you on different clips and skits that I took. From unusual activity but we'll get to that in a second sure let's introduce John so I can say a lot of flattering things from being a pro football player to the trading floor and all that but you know what the best person to talk about your your experience is you so why don't I give you the mic and you kind of lead the way tell us 20 30 years ago how everything started from football to oh. options and stocks and CNBC it sounds crazy yeah it, it uh Uh, you probably wouldn't write a script quite like this, but um, I started my career in Chicago, Micah, 40 years ago. Um, this, uh, this is my 41st year that I'm starting right now in Chicago. I came here right out of college, and I came with the intention of playing football for the Bears. I was an undrafted free agent, so I went out uh, with the Chicago Bears and uh, Uh, was a linebacker. And so I got to be on the field, play uh, against Cincinnati and the New York Giants and uh, Kansas City Chiefs and I think the Green Bay Packers. I only Maybe. played four games. Um, so you'd think they'd be more memorable. <laughs> But <laughs> um, uh, Mike Singletary was the guy that ended up taking uh, that spot instead of me. And uh, I know him. He became a Hall of Famer. Yep. your spot exactly so if you're going to get beat by somebody it might as well be a hall of famer that's cool. and superman uh a great football player very solid person um and uh, like i say better football player than me but i really enjoyed playing um with him and with the bears um but i'm very grateful also that i didn't uh continue um playing with them mainly because uh, of all the injuries that players incur. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my brother um, played six years in the NFL and uh, he's Pete. He's also on the halftime report. Of course. Um, many people think we look the same and that we're twins or something. Um, six years apart. Uh, mm -hmm. But he did play uh, six years with NFL teams. Um, and then he played two years in the uh, World League. And um, when I was done playing when I got cut, my uh, agent asked me if I wanted to go up to Canada or uh, what I wanted to do. And I said, I didn't really want to play football up in Canada, um, yeah. mainly because the money was just not there. I wasn't being paid a ton of money anyway to yeah. play pro football as a free agent. But mm -hmm. to go up in Canada, you know, I would have paid, played for half of that. And it didn't seem like that was a good uh, risk reward. Definitely. so to speak. So I uh, uh, told my agent I'd like to stay in Chicago. I liked the city and that I thought I would probably go down to the floor uh, because I saw these traders. They'd come out every day and watch us practice. So I figured, okay, this seems like a pretty good gig. I'd, uh, I'd like a job that's done at <laughs> 1.15. That's when the corn traders are done. Yeah. Um, stock traders are done at three in Chicago. Option traders, the same, really, unless they trade index yeah. options. So I figured those were good jobs. 
I wanted a job like that. <laughs> you know, if you're 21 years you have old. Your, you have your whole afternoons available. Free to exactly. you. Exactly. So that's what I uh, set out to do. He said, come on, I'll set you up. You can trade for me um, down on the floor. Um, you'll be a runner. Uh, and then you'll be a clerk. And then, you know, if you're good enough, you'll be a trader. Um, and so I started out hating it, but loving being down on the floor. And then as I started to sort of understand what was happening down there, Micah, I uh, decided, yeah, this is something I could do for a living. And luckily, I've been doing it now for 40 years. So that's a great segue to kind of the taking that 40 years and put the, putting your experience uh, not into test, but actually you're using your experience to understand the market. So there's a lot of discussion about the market right now. You yes, see sir. it almost every other week, all, new all-time high. Mm -hmm. There's always a side that says it's going to crash. And there's always a side that says earnings are great. Revenues are great. Big companies, the mega caps, some are reporting in, in two hours. And we're actually after this conversation, we're, I'm going to jump on a live that we're going to have for the Amazon and Apple reports. Mm -hmm. So they're going to report and they're probably going to be solid reports. So from your experience, are we into a winter rally, a Christmas rally, or actually are we, we got to our top and we should liquidate everything, sell everything and, you know, lo look for um, cheap real estate somewhere? Um, I don't think it's over yet. Um, and I, I said yet not to be, uh, uh, not to sound like I, I'm a doomsdayer at all. Um, rates will most probably stay low for a long time, even when the yeah. Fed starts moving them up, I believe. Um, so they won't be as low as the 1% that they were at on that 10 year, but mm -hmm. I think we can tolerate 2%, um, yeah. and the market can be just fine. Uh, we're not there yet, but I think we will be in the first quarter of next year. Yeah. Um, and I think overall uh, that the market will uh, continue to do well for, in particular, for the firms that really have, this would always be said, I guess, pricing power. I yeah. mean, who has pricing power right now? Well, Tesla. They just moved up the price of their cars by $5,000, I think, or something Third like that. Third time this year, I think. Yeah. So obviously they have pricing power. Many other car companies have pricing power because there's more demand than there is supply. And now yeah. with Tesla pushing out those, you know, 100,000 or more cars uh, to Hertz and Carvana, um, I think that's just further endorsement of EVs. I think it's helping lift uh, charge point, CHPT, Blink, yeah. BLNK, you know, those mm -hmm. are charge, charging stations and things. Yeah, we know them. I, we covered I them think, on the channel. We love those companies. Oh, course. yeah. And I think lithium, you know, like ABML and Lithium yeah. America and things like that. I think uh, QuantumScape, I think all those companies do well in that environment. And mm -hmm. as as you know, I'm sure, um, and your your listeners and fans back in Israel, you know, they probably complain from time to time that they didn't, you know, put Israel just a few miles away where they'd have all that oil. Um, <laughs> because when oil is moving up, virtually everything moves up. Um, the alternatives, solar, um, and, uh, you know, so that ETF in the United States, TAN, yeah. um, covers a whole bunch of those solar names. Um, wind ocean powered things um yeah. uranium and nuclear powered i mean in other words if one power gets more expensive it means all the alternatives um come in focus too and i'm i'm sure that's not surprising to your viewers and fans that that's the way it goes but so i'm not looking for the market to break down um because of this and because the taxes at least under the present proposals by yeah. President Biden, it's not going to be extraordinary um, increase in either corporate or individual taxes. We'll see what they do as far as that billionaire's tax. Yeah. But um, those were all things we were worried about before. We were worried that the president had already crimped the supply of gas um, and crude oil products in the United States. 
by stopping drilling on public land. Um, and that also, and it's having an impact. Um, and also that he might be, you know, with the Keystone pipeline and things like that, that prices would likely be moving higher for energy in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, then we worried about, oh, aren't our taxes? Or, so that's a tax. Obviously, you know, when you're paying twice the amount for gas or fuel that you paid last year, that's a tax. Um, some of that actually does go to the government because they generally have a um, a gasoline tax here in America yeah. that's in some states really substantial, like California. It's yeah. huge. So th they pay like seven and eight dollars right now for gasoline, whereas almost here in the twice as much as I pay on the East Coast. Yeah, exactly. You guys, East Coast, New Jersey, um, and so forth, parts of Pennsylvania have really cheap gas. Yeah, that's um, true. And uh, on a relative basis, anyway, maybe it's three dollars or three dollars and twenty cents. Yeah, it's three thirty-nine now. I think something like that. Okay, and here in Chicago right now, it's four um, for the cheapest gas, and it's usually closer to five for the next. Yeah. And like we already said, it's eight in California. Um, not everywhere, but in certain parts. So it's probably six to seven most of California. Um, but I think a lot of us were worried, Mika, about what would happen if those taxes were increased and there was this increase uh, demand by consumers and by airlines and cruise lines and the like uh, at the same time that we'd see inflation picking up pretty dramatically. So yeah. I'm one of those people that does think it's not transitory, that I think wages, once you increase them, have to stay there. You're not going to tell those employees, well, now, now that I've got the power back instead of you guys, I'm going to cut I'm going to read this. Yeah. They'll walk off. And, you know, nobody will want to go back to work at that company. That's so, true. Um, there are a lot of people that I pay attention to. Evan Sohn, who's um, his brothers, and he have that Sohn conference yeah. that they put on. And the, the money that goes to charity from there is fantastic. but. Evan is uh, the head of a company called Recruiter.com. Um, mm -hmm. It's a publicly traded company. It's small yeah. cap. Um, but what they do is they uh, basically find workers for jobs. And right now, everybody wants remote work. But the good news is that, shoot, they could be hiring people from Israel to work for a Silicon Valley company. Because if you don't have to be in Silicon Valley anymore... You could be a programmer working out of Buffalo, New York. Most of them, of course, are going to move to low-tax states like Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Wyoming, Nevada, those kinds of, of places. Because it just makes sense. If I'm making $100,000 and I'm paying 10 or 12% of that to the state, and I can yeah. just cut that out by moving, I save enough to pay for my rent. Um, so I'm a much richer person. And I think People like that, you know, that will that can work remote will work remote. So that's going to change uh, here in America, I think, pretty dramatically the workforce and where they work. Um, but overall, I think most of that is good in terms of uh, the yeah. markets in general. So the things I still worry about are inflation picking up more speed and the Fed trying to hit it hard. Uh, which might cause things to collapse yeah. a little. Um, but other than that, um, it doesn't seem like they've got the belly for um, increasing taxes um, because they already sort of have a, uh, a governor on the growth, which is, you know, the higher prices yeah. we're paying for things. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, while we're recording this, you talked about working from home. I think Zuckerberg right now, maybe he finished already his presentation, but he's talking about Facebook and I'm seeing my call options r running up now. So that's good, which brings me to the next. Exactly. Which brings me to our ne to our next uh, discussion. So listening to you and Pete, uh, your brother, and I'll and I'll show the slide in a second of uh, Market Rebellion. It's amazing the way you combine. And I think maybe you might be one of the most professional teams in combining between stock stock options and let's say equity playing between them and using the velocity of the market and using the volume to your advantage thank you first of all 
I think it's amazing. And I would love to hear kind of and share with, with my viewers how you combine between holding equity, holding stocks and options. And through different videos that I'm loading here, we're also exposing more and more people to the combination between them. But the understanding, I think you guys, and we'll talk about unusual activity in a second, but the combination between holding stocks, holding equity, but selling covered calls or anything, all the combinations that you do there are amazing. So I would love to hear, and I'll share while you're speaking, I'll share kind of the Market Rebellion website during that. Sure. Well, um, and thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, my brother and I, um, we were seeing that uh, obviously there are people who either legitimately or illegitimately can get better information than we have. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they act on that information. They trade. Um, yeah. Some people give Nancy, and I do too sometimes, give Nancy Pelosi a hard time because <laughs> members of Congress can and do here yeah. in the United States trade. And yeah. they sell information about what's going on in their committees. This is with full knowledge. Uh, crowd strike? I, someone, someone says crowd strike around here? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, believe it or not, they did pass a rule and it got signed into law by Obama. But before it was signed into law, they stripped out a major portion of it because people were outraged during uh, the President Obama's uh, reign as our president yeah. that Congress was trading as actively as it was. And now they're, of course, outraged that the Fed is trading the same way. Of course. <laughs> because they both have information that's pretty critical. Um, yeah. So like I say, though, Mika, there are times when the, the information that people trade on is legitimate because they go to a conference, uh, an analyst day for Tesla or a, uh, a new product introduction, and they're right there on their cell phone you know, ready to make that trade um, as, or at least type on their phone as they're hearing the information come out of the analyst or out of Mark yeah. Zuckerberg's mouth. Um, and you, it doesn't get better than that. And they can run over the market and jump on things quicker than just about anybody, even in high frequency trading, because yeah. high frequency traders are really just in and out they're not positioning for long term. They're just trying to make the bid ask spread, the differential between where the bid is yeah. for that stock and where the offer is. And if they can do that a billion times a day, they can make a lot of money. Um, the the other the rest of us have time frames that are longer than nanoseconds, um, and it really does um, come down to who has information that's better and that they can act on faster. Uh, than somebody else. And like I say, sometimes that's very legitimate. Other times it might be insider information and so forth. So what we try to do with our heat seeker algorithm, um, because right now there's about 7.7 .7 million quotes per second streaming in the United States. How right. do you decide which ones to focus on? Yeah. Obviously in a second by second, nanosecond, by nanosecond world. Well, the computer does it for us. So the computer follows these trades and jumps on them um, as it sees uh, the trend picking up on the bullish side, which would be call buying, or mm -hmm. on the bearish side, which would be put buying. And yeah. it's as simple as that. We're coattailing on somebody that we think has better access to information than we do. We don't know what the information is, but we can see it, the footsteps of those big traders in the markets, and we just follow along. And I think I heard the, I, th I think I heard you or your brother share the story that it's basically you remember yourself. Yeah, it was a, it was in the conference three weeks ago that you remember yourself on the trading floor having all these people come in and buying some out of the money call, and you're like, why are they buying these crazy calls? And then you kind of picked up on the idea, right? So you you can probably. S tell the story better than me. So yeah, yeah, go ahead. And it was actually puts. Um, oh, okay. But but yeah, we've told the story both ways. But one of the times that really set it off for us was my birthday, probably 20 some odd years ago. And they came in buying a ton of puts at the end of the day. 
And we always told our traders that if people come in um, and they force you to be long or short when we were making markets on the floor, yeah. don't let them do that. You be long because you want to be long. You be you put on a short position because you, as a trader, want to be short. Don't let somebody else dictate to you coming in late in the day. If they want to buy a bunch of puts from us at the end of the day, we're going to move up that price dramatically because yeah. we don't want to be positioned that way because they probably know something. And in this particular case, they did. The stock came out with earnings that were fine, but then they announced they were cutting one of their major products because of a conflict and the stock fell 25 or 30 percent in the after hours. And all those people that were buying those puts made millions and we lost millions. Yeah. So we figured, OK, again, that's the last time that's going to happen. Um, if you want to come home long, do it. If you want to come home short, do it. But don't let that paper, the, those buying activities, don't let that dictate. So yeah. ever since we've done that um, and ever since we've used that algorithm, we can ride the wave of that uh, knowledge rather than being taken advantage of by it. Yeah, and I think this week, maybe in the last not only seven days, maybe 14 days, you had amazing success in two, three very, very strong bangers, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, we've, uh, again, we're lucky. Um, yeah. But Tesla, you know, the, the amount of buying, Mika, in the uh, um, EV space has been crazy. crazy. So Tesla, you know, just in the last seven trading days, they were buying at the 850 strike. Then they were buying at the 900 strike. Then they were buying at the 950 strike. And then they were buying at the 1010 strike in yeah. both December and January. So obviously, yeah. as they were doing that, the stock was moving higher. And those 850s went in the money and they rolled up to the 900s, which went in mm -hmm. the money, to the 950s, which went in the money, and then the 1010s, which are now in the money. I mean, that was a huge windfall. Um, Lucid, they were buying that stock that was $24 um, just a week ago. And that stock has not quite doubled, um, but on a percentage basis, obviously, it's much smaller. It uh, made a much bigger move than Tesla. Those yeah. calls, the 25 and the 26 calls, went $14 in the money. Yeah, crazy. Um, for a $26 call to go that deep in the money that quickly. Um, those are, you know, uh, the kind of things you just dream about. Hmm. But, you know, that happens. And happily, it happens um, because people tip you off. Now they're buying Fisker calls, FSR. Yeah. Um, so EVs have been quite hot lately. And uh, I don't see a reason, given what Biden proposed, the president proposed. Now, it's not passed the Congress yet. It's not been signed into law yet, but in his $1.75 trillion um, yeah. spending package, there's a lot on EVs and uh, green uh, yeah. power and so forth, which is good for everybody in that space. 500,000 charging stations, he mentioned today twice. I heard the... The live conference, yeah, and and electric buses, which I'm still looking for the major companies that hold electric buses because he wants electrified buses, but I don't think there are a lot of companies doing electric buses. We'll we'll probably find those doubling and tripling in size in the next few days if someone yeah. fi finds those companies. Maybe Workhorse will change instead of being the postal postal office, uh, maybe truck to being a bus. I don't know. Yeah. It could be. I mean, yeah, but one of, you know, one of the interesting things. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say that's what you would depend on a CEO to do would be to pivot like that into yeah. where, you know, where the puck's going. Um, sure, warehouses and things like that make sense. And they've been running on natural gas. Anybody who's seen uh, Home Depot, they have that big natural gas canister on yeah. a lot of those vehicles, you know, that run in the warehouses mm -hmm. because, of course, then they're not putting out dangerous uh, emissions to people in an enclosed space. Um, but to have those be EVs, yep, 
great idea. Buses and trucks, even better idea. Yeah, for sure. And now what we're drifting off to a different thing. And you know what? I'll share the screen because you guys started something very unique, except the unusual activity. You started Market Rebellion Crypto. So before every, I'll, I'll explain what we see. So that, I'll explain for you. You probably can explain better. So you have special programs that you not only educate, but you also have trainings and ongoing courses around different, let's say, areas of, of uh, trading and investing. And the newest is crypto, right? So what now crypto? So I, I have my view. My viewers know my view. I follow plan B. You probably know that uh, concept of stock to flow, which means that Bitcoin is probably going to 100,000, maybe even a bit more. And we're trading based on that. Um, but you guys started the market rebellion crypto. So what brought you to, to the crypto world? Well, um, there was a trader um, who left Goldman Sachs and went out to Silicon Valley uh, for the lifestyle and because he was already a very wealthy guy. And his name was Peter, is Peter Brigger. And yeah. Peter Brigger ended up founding Fortress out in California. And he is still at the at the helm. Um, smart guy. Um, one of uh, the things my brother and I do to give back is we do a lot of charitable work. Um, and one of the charities that we donated a dinner uh, with us uh, to, uh, I think it was, shoot, I think it was Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did and what we still do is we say, okay, if you want to come to New York, we will uh, bring you on set, let you take pictures with all the cast and things like that. Back, especially when we were in New York a lot. Now I'm remote most of the time. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll still do it. I was in New York yesterday. Um, but um, we would take them onto the set and then we would take them out to dinner um, to a great meal at this fabulous steakhouse, uh, the Hunt and Fish Club in New York. Yeah. And uh, Peter Brigger was one of the guys that attended there. And, you know, he and his friends gave a lot of money to charity because they're generous guys. And when we were at dinner, he this is in 2017, he was just pounding me with the idea that, John, you got to get into Bitcoin. Why hmm. are you not into this? And I said, I've traded it a little, but I'm not holding it. And he said, yeah. buy it and hold it. So anyway, I started accumulating then in 2017. Um, I put most of that in cold storage, which you and your listeners know means I removed yep. it from the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it's on a bunch of these, you know, a bunch of these uh, ledgers yes, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I also have Voyager Digital, um, which is the platform I love to trade on. Yeah. Because whenever I'm flipping into, you know, stable coins or whatever, they pay a lot of money for your deposits. Yeah. And they're can. not the only one. You know, I'm sure Gemini does. I know. Um, uh, Galaxy. Blockfi does that. I think everyone does that today. The yep. staking, the API over holding. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and so I love that. But so I have my hot wallet, if you will, and my cold wallet. Cold is yeah. in storage. Hot wallet, I trade, and I've just been amazed by um, the opportunities, in particular in the options yeah. of these uh, cryptocurrencies. Because people over lever all the time. They buy too many calls or they short puts and they get in trouble and they get liquidated. And on those liquidations, whether it's liquidating shorts, which drives the market up, or liquidating longs, which drives the market down, you know, it creates great opportunities to trade. Yeah. So, and we think the, op the options are more or less mispriced because of that. So uh, we have a crypto hedge fund just launched the beginning of October. It's up 30% through today. Amazing. <laughs> I know. In less than a month. Not not uh, like she be new, but still. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say she be new. Uh, if you, you probably saw this, but if you put, because one wallet did this. Yeah. And as I saw your, that. your viewers know, a wallet, of course, is you know, whether it's MetaMask or whatever it is, somebody bought 
Shiba Inu, uh, eight thousand dollars worth August of twenty twenty. That same wallet today is worth five point seven five billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so have I made that? And much? he's still and he's still buying. I don't know if you saw. You saw he's still buying. It's like still buying. What are you still buying for? It's crazy. I know, um, but. Um, I think that the opportunities in crypto are great. Um, if if people want to learn, that's why we started that, you know, yes, uh, crypto education well. on our site. We've got chat rooms for people, yeah. again, at Market Rebellion for crypto. Um, I think it's marketrebellion.com slash try crypto. Yeah, um, but this is the landing page. You have this landing page in it. Probably after people put in their information, they go directly there. Yep. And it's just uh, phenomenal, um, the opportunity that I think crypto is. Um, and you don't have to take a huge shot like Shiba Inu. Um, <laughs> you could, but I have traded Doge. I trade a bunch of altcoins. I probably yep. have 12 of them or more. Um, I really like Hedera Hashgraph. I really like Solana. Um, Litecoin, um, you know, there's, I'm sure the yeah. Bitcoin maximalists out there hate me for it, but I don't just trade Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. I have a fair amount, um, but I love trading Ethereum, Bitcoin, probably 10 or 12 altcoins. And uh, sadly, though, I'm not that guy with the 8,000 in Shiba Inu. Um, <laughs> I would, but if I was, we might not be having this conversation. The, the right question now. is, if someone approached you today and said, look, John, I have a project. It doesn't really have a lot of people. It's a big, it's a project at the beginning. Give me eight grand. And you know what? Maybe something would happen. The question is, would you put the eight grand? That's the question. Now, most people yeah. would probably say now in hindsight, yeah, of course, I knew Shiba and you would. But no, it's a project. There's someone, 60, maybe 16-year-old, I don't know, the age even. That comes to you and says, all I need is eight grand. That's all I need. I'm collecting from a lot of people. Will you contribute? And you'll probably say, no way. Everyone wants something. I'm not going to get it. And that's why we don't have the five billion today. Or maybe one of our viewers does. If you do, write in the comments, right? John and I would love to <laughs> have a stake with you in the we city. We would love to. Yeah, we'll keep you anonymous, but we'd love to hear. Exactly. Um, I agree. Uh, I do put money in a fair amount of... Uh, 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 you know, uh, the seed round and the initial token offerings and things yeah. like that. I'm in several. I'm in one right now that's a, uh, a charity coin uh, nice. that I think has great potential because every time somebody uses the coin, um, trades it, uses it uh, to buy something or whatever, a certain amount of money goes to charity, a fixed oh, amount. Um, and they're basically trying to, it's for earth fund. Um, and they're, what they're basically doing is they're saying, okay, we created this, we created the ecosystem. Now you that want to do this for MS or you that want to do this for cancer research or whatever, you should ride on our rails. And if you do, it's going to be good for us. It's going to be good for you because every yeah. time, um, you know, we've built all the expensive stuff, you know, and it's not that terrible, but They've gone through all the trouble and they've got it listed um, on exchange and so forth. Those kinds of things, Mika, are things that excite me. So I'm involved with that one um, and several others. Uh, but would I have uh, sold that $8,000 investment when Shiba Inu was, you know, whatever, four months ago? Probably. I'd still be really rich if I did that. But That's I wouldn't true. be a multi-billionaire because I don't know how much I would have held till now. <laughs> and think about if it loses zero, that person, it's, it, it's, it's a crazy story. Uh, you yep. know, it's an evo a de developing story. The pr this video would probably launch tomorrow or the day after. We don't even know. Maybe that person would uh, be interviewed in the next hour and he'll expose himself or we'll never know. You never, you know, these things, these things are crazy. Yep, they are. But that's Those also the dreams. But, it keeps but you I'll go. Back. I have just one thing which is important, I think, to the viewers because, and I had this in one of the comments that someone wrote, and we kind of uh, chatted over it. There's still the word belief when someone talks about crypto. 
So when you talk about gold, no one says belief, right? Gold exists. When you talk about fiat currency, which is a regular currency, no one says belief. But when someone is asked about Bitcoin or Ethereum, everyone says, do you believe that it's going to be the word belief? What, what, what do you think about that? Well, um, <clears throat> I think they're mathematically provable, both of them. And um, I, I say this and I bet you do as well. Um, assets gather their value by their scarcity. Um, so if there's only 18.6 million Bitcoins in the wild and maybe close to a million have been lost already by people who were careless with their wallets or whatever. And it's happened to me when I first started, I lost some of my coins, can't get them back. They're just gone. Um, if I had them now, it would be fantastic. But I think a lot of people have experienced that. Uh, especially if they're truthful, um, because some of these things are somewhat complicated um, in terms of now, it's much easier. You know, you could have a MetaMask wallet today and it's on your computer or it's on your cell phone or whatever, yeah. and um, easy for you to create that wallet, easy for you to buy and sell and so forth, um, very quick. Uh, and th there's a whole bunch of them. Exodus, or whatever you want to use, you know, Ledger X, yeah. all these different things. But a lot of people are, pardon me, are um, challenged by some of the technology to mm -hmm. the point where they say, you know what, I really need a Bitcoin ETF. Nobody needs a Bitcoin ETF. <laughs> I mean, this no, we one. Do, is, we do, we do, we do. John, we do. We want the, we want the money we want to, the be, to be flooding in. We want it. Yeah. But we don't want to buy it. Buy it. But we want you know, it. Yeah. And here's why, folks. The reason that Mika and I don't want to buy it is it comes with 90 basis points of fees at ProShares, the first and only one available in America right now. Granted, there's right. some up in Canada and maybe yeah. others around the world, but they don't even own coins. They own the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange futures. So guess what? They have to roll those futures. As each expires, they have to roll, sell this one, buy this one, and then do it again and again and again. And all those fees add up. So if you um, just spend, you know, a couple hours, not like weeks, if you spent a couple hours to understand how to open a wallet and buy and transact in from fiat to crypto and so forth, you would be so far ahead. Of of I, I'm all for the Bitcoin ETF. I am, but this one um, in particular, the fees are too high. The rolling costs will be too high. You'd be much better off, um, you know, spending 300 bucks with us and learning about it, and then doing it yourself. Because think of it, a hundred thousand dollars. You're spending nine hundred dollars in fees to yeah. that pro shares, and then all those other fees to make that roll every month. And that's to do, what, a Bitcoin and a half? Not even if you wanted to do that because Bitcoin's 60000 today. So, you know, $100,000 worth of Bitcoin means you get basically one and a half Bitcoins, but you own it yourself with no fees. And guess what? Somebody yeah. like Voyager or um, uh, what uh, any of those others that we talked about will pay you 6 or 7% for your deposited Bitcoins. So yeah. You'll get paid instead of you paying a fee to pro shares, you know, which like I say, I'm happy yeah. they have it, but I will never buy that. Yeah, me, me too. But I think it, it was a great step because it exposed an a lot of the institutions that were afraid, the pension funds and others that understood that they need to invest, but didn't have the vehicle. Uh, and for also for us, it's good because when they roll futures, at least there's because we're at all time high, we know what price we want to get to. But you need those contracts to kind of open up that price. So that price explanatory or price price uh, exploration is great. So before yeah. we go to, to my last questions, I do want to okay. give you a second to talk about market rebellion. So let me share the screen and I'll, 
I'll let you, and I have your Twitter account also open here. So if you want people to follow you, three at three and all the great things you do over social media, just guide oh, me through. You. I have the landing page. I have this. I have your Twitter and the Market Rebellion Twitter. So go ahead. Sure. Um, well, um, we've been doing unusual option activities since basically uh, 2000. And we did it and kept it to ourselves until 2006. And then um, after we'd sold our trading firm to uh, Citadel, um, we still held on to that intellectual property. And we started putting it into something called Option Monster and Trade Monster. We created a brokerage firm, which was Trade Monster, and a, a site that is very, very similar to what you're looking at there for Market Rebellion. And it was called Option Monster. In 2016, um, we sold option or uh, rather trade monster to e-trade mm -hmm. um, and knock on wood for three quarters of a billion dollars. Um, we partnered up with General Atlantic Partners, which is a big VC venture capital firm out of New York. And uh, w they came in at a 300 million valuation. And then together, two years later, we sold it to e-trade for 750. Um, but knock on wood, um, we did not sell our intellectual property. We sold the trading platform and all the customer accounts that wanted to go went to E-Trade. Meanwhile, yeah. all of our subscribers stayed with us, but we had to change the name because they wanted the name Option Monster. So we changed it to Market Rebellion. And uh, today it's got you know tens of thousands of people that subscribe to our products. We have education uh, on market rebellion. So if you're a, somebody who wants to learn about technical analysis um, or somebody who wants to learn about basic, intermediate, or advanced option trading or crypto, we've got it all on that platform, on market rebellion. Yeah. And I think uh, that the people that are using it are really happy with the uh, results that they get because they don't blow themselves up because you can lose a lot more money um, doing it at, and doing it wrong than you can instead by doing remote learning on this platform, which means any time of the day or night, somebody can log in, um, look at uh, um, a particular chapter, go through the yeah. chapter, and then answer the questions at the end of it and move on to the next one. And it's not like we put those tests in there so that we can get more money out of people. We put the test in there so people know what they think they know um, yeah. before they can move on to the next chapter. And that's been really successful. We use a book that we give away that's called Follow the Smart Money. Um, Which one? And this we, one? That one. Yep. <laughs> that one. We... Uh, and now it's completely free. The one he has is hardcover. The paper hard back, copy, yeah. We we even ship that for free. Although I don't know about overseas. Uh, no, I don't so think I, I don't think overseas. But in the U.S., you do. That's true. Yep. And you can also get it on Amazon and all that kind of stuff. But we've sold now almost four hundred thousand copies of that book. By sold, I mean people get it for free, but yeah. they pay seven dollars shipping. And that goes to a third party. But now, like I said, since we don't do the hardcover anymore, we just do uh, paperback. They get it for free, shipped out in the U.S. anyway. So but I have a vintage. I have a vintage model. I can you do. NFT it. That's right. You should <laughs> NFT it. <laughs> NFT it. <laughs> the NFT market is exploding. Why not NFT that? So yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's great. Uh, you know, I've been through the conference in Vegas. I didn't go to Vegas. I did it virtu virtually, and that's kind of uh, what sparked the idea of having you on on the show because oh, we you. have all these conversations. And I, you know, I think your opinions are are amazing. So before we wrap things up, three top stocks, not for tomorrow morning, not unusual activity that someone should hold for the next few months. I'm not saying years. Years, you know, that's that's a bigger question. Next few months. What are your thoughts? And guys, this is not financial advice. This mm -hmm. is just entertainment. Remember this, everything, and I'll say everything in the beginning as well. I'll add that portion. Nothing here is financial advice. Uh, everyone needs to do their own research, due diligence before they put their money anywhere. 
Not because True. I say something, not because John says something, not because anyone on YouTube or TV says something. It's your money. Take care of it. Now, <laughs> three best stocks for the next few months. Um, believe it or not, two of them have earnings today. Um, mm -hmm. Apple and Amazon. Um, Amazon, because it's a tech play. Yes, yeah. it's a retailer. And we both know they started off with books. Um, but the reason they became what they are is tech. Um, and so uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, love what they do. They are the 800-pound gorilla. They're not the only one. You know, Google's got a cloud and Google's got, uh, um, let's see, Microsoft has Azure. Um, IBM's getting its butt kicked and will probably come close to folding up that business yeah. because they're being beaten so badly by the other three. Um, but uh, I think Amazon is that dual play. They have yeah. the tech in terms of AWS. They use that tech to now stream all, all of the things that they can deliver for Amazon Prime, um, which are, you know, it's a ubiquitous thing in the United States and soon I'm sure around the world that people just pay a subscription and get stuff delivered and they just love that. And yeah. Amazon is uniquely positioned to continue to profit from that. So I love owning that one, Mika, and just selling calls against it every month. It's just like free money. Same thing with uh, Apple, because the uh, the health side of Apple will be huge. It is growing, but it will be huge. Um, it, women's health as well as men's health. Um, and the fact that Apple has you know, basically a billion people that are in their ecosystem right now. They keep making products that people want, like the watch and the new Mac with the M1 and M1 Pro chip yeah. or the uh, um, iPhones and so forth. And all of it goes up to their cloud. Um, so their cloud revenue is just exploding. Um, the health side of their business, likewise, so, and, you know, when they ever get a handle on their, their streaming, I mean, obviously Ted Lasso. Um, yeah, it's an United amazing States, show. Yep, is, is their real breakthrough um, show, but they'll have a lot more. Apple will be just like Netflix and just like Amazon producing feature films that people, you know, love. I mean, they did a number of them, but they were just on the platform so far, like Tom Hanks. Greyhound. Yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, but they do a bunch of those kinds of things. So Apple, um, Amazon, those are two big mega caps. If I had to pick another, I might go uh, for the short term anyway with Cliffs, CLF, because they both pull stuff out of the ground. It's materials yeah. play, but then they pull it out for themselves because they're pulling it out and they're not selling it to somebody else like Freeport does and so forth. Mm -hmm. They're pulling yeah, it out, Freeport turning it out. into steel. So yeah. CLF um, with the infrastructure build, the you know, even though it's not going to be 1.75 trillion spent now, if this bill passes, it'll be 1.75 trillion spent over a decade. And I think they're in a great position. I own a bunch of CLF. I own all yeah. three of the stocks that I just talked about. And of course, your third biggest position is Tesla, which. Just love it. Um, I love that people shoot against it. I know you said it's one of your biggest yeah. um, as well. And um, because of the price of the stock, it has become my third biggest um, because I haven't wanted to trim it at all. And when I shortened up or lightened up on Facebook, which is now going to be called Meta, I see. They're calling yeah. themselves a dumb name, I think. Um, but, you know, they want to be known as the metaverse, right? So, you know, in Hebrew, and I I wanted to share that with my... So, the the new name for Facebook is probably going to be Meta, M-E-T-A. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, Meta is dead. <laughs> uh, a woman, it's a, it's a female uh, word for death. So, someone... Uh, Someone dead or a female dead is meta. That's meta, <laughs> just so you know. Of course, you can write it with a different letter and that becomes metaverse and all that. But at the end of the day, 
Uh, in Hebrew, Facebook meta means that Facebook is dead. Just well, you know, so now. So now you have a joke to run on your Twitter. And by the way, the, yeah, anyone that doesn't follow it. Market Rebellion Tomorrow. Twitter, if you want updates. What's new, your handle on Twitter? So I follow a lot of uh, information on Twitter. I consume all my uh, news through Twitter, whether following companies, following influencers, following. So that's how I consume my news. I, and of course, CNBC on the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, we connected actually some of the Twitter accounts, Market Rebellion being one of them, to our Discord. So any new push that you guys put out, we get in our Discord channel. Uh, because And yesterday during the earnings report, I didn't do a live. I'm sharing you the ins and outs of our Discord. So I didn't do a live yeah. yesterday. But I kind of had CNBC here on my left-hand side. And I wrote down everything that was happening. And one of the guys joked that you guys are faster than me. Because you posted EPS like that. And I'm like, wait, I'm still typing here. And you guys already pushed it out. So, so that's around Twitter. Businesses, not businesses, sorry. In the US, Twitter is very used and useful. I think they have to figure out their marketing model. They have to figure out how to make money out of it. Do you yep. pay them anything to be? Um, nothing, right? And We, we do they, run ad campaigns on Twitter. Um, That's fine. But from, at the end of the day, you post so much information there. Mm-hmm. They don't get anything. The fact that I go into Twitter, I haven't seen, I don't think I've ever seen anything. I never clicked anything there. I don't think I put my credit card on anything there versus Facebook that if you sit with three people and talk about a stroller when your kids are not at the age at all, you'll start getting ads of strollers and baby and diapers and all that. Yeah. Uh, happened to me. So it's not like uh, making up a story. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm right there with you. But no, they're not listening to anything. It just happened to get those ads a yeah, second just later. Randomly. But not listening. So yeah, that's my yeah. that's my view on Twitter. So John, thank you very, very, very much oh, for my viewers, which would say you, Toda man. in Hebrew or Toda Raba, which is very thank you uh, thank you. for your time for your knowledge, for everything. And of course, anyone, I'll add the link to Market Rebellion to the description. So anyone that wants to register to the courses, anything, it's in English, but most of the people know English, so it shouldn't be any problem. The information there is amazing. I think the team, at least the ones that I saw on your conference are amazing. A lot of knowledge. And I'll tell you one small thing again before we wrap this up. One of the strongest takeaways from the conference was a small thing that um, every t- I think you had a rapid fire. And people mm-hmm. in the crowd said, oh, uh, uh, what do you think about this and that? Let's say Apple. And you're like, okay, what, is the, what position do you have? I think it was you or Monte was on the stage. What's your position? And whether they were long, short, options. The second question was always, what's your stop loss? And that's something that was so important. I took back and the next video, I think, or the one after I said, guys, listen. I I knew it was important. We talked about that, but start taking care of your stop losses. It's so it's being a lot more responsible for your money than holding the bag and then turning a trade into an investment. Because when trade goes bad and you don't have a stop loss, then guess what? Now you're a long term investor because yep. you don't want to you don't want to sell. So excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I thank you, and and I hope all of you guys have a lot of success in the market. Good luck. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, John.